If any of you have looked at my videos, then you will know that I am a big fan of baseless pots. And I've had a lot of questions from viewers saying, fine, but these big pots are expensive. So in this video, I'm going to show you five ways I make very inexpensive baseless pots. And this is the first one. So this bird, which you can see is in the pot, is in just the ordinary old black plastic pot that you get free from nurseries. And I've just clad it with hessian because I then put yew plants all the way around the edge. And I probably planted this a year ago, maybe a wee bit more. And yew goes incredibly fast, despite what people tell you. And I can almost take the hessian off because it's almost at the top to hide the pot totally and I just clip it around the edge and over the top and that is a brilliant way and I use it a lot. Now I use it in many situations, I've used it on pucker hotels and I use it particularly if I'm trying to screen something. So if on a client's job we're trying to screen some next door housing um, and I bring in big trees, if I put them in a baseless pot they are automatically about that much higher, depending on the height of the pot, than they would be anyway. And often that makes all the difference. So that's one reason I use them, just to give you artificial height. Another reason um, that I like is if I'm planting an evergreen boundary around a client's property um, and there are big mature trees, but there's a gap below the big mature's canopy. And so I bring in screening plants to hide that gap. It's actually quite difficult to plant in between existing trees. It's very difficult, you can damage the tree. Um, so what I do then is I put them in the baseless pots and I would use again probably something really cheap like these black plastic ones and then I plant something to hide the bottoms. And that way they're not going to be interfering with the tree's roots below and so that works really well. Also on a terrace or something it just jumps the tree off the plant up and if you're planting a small tree in a plot pot it means that you can walk underneath it quite easily uh, which is lovely. So that's my number one tip for baseless pots. It doesn't have to be you hedging it could be any sort of evergreen hedging. You don't have to hide it with the hessian and I take many cuttings of hedging like um, box and you myself so you can almost do it for virtually free. Now I'm going to show you my next four methods of very inexpensive baseless pots. So here I've got a selection of three handmade pots here. The first pot is this one. Now this is basically a chuck out pot from a nursery or garden center. They sell lots of plants in these really cheap type black plastic pots. They're quite rigid, they're very tough. So I start by cutting the bases out either with loppers such as these or secateurs I use. Sometimes I use a little power saw just depending on how thick it is. And then I've painted it, and in this case, I've painted it to match most of our woodwork here, which was this Cinza paint, which goes on to just about everything. This is just one coat. Now, to make it look a wee bit better, I've embellished it. And I've embellished it with Fleur de Lis. But these are plastic moulds that you get from Peter Evans Studio, who's in Luton. And he has books and books of different emblems. And he produces them in all different grades of plastic. And this is the thinnest. And I normally use scissors to cut them out, but I've only got my secateurs here. But they, it cuts really easily. Um, I like that. And I've done a sundial on the house using this material which I've gold leaf and you really wouldn't know it was just pl plastic. Um, so having chosen your emblem you then cut it out ideally leaving a little bit of edge around it so you've got some flat surface to stick it onto the pot with and then I just use the sort of um, a very quick fast strong glue or any really type that's good for, for all materials to stick it on and then I've painted it. So that is very simple. I could have put many different emblems on there. Um, I could have done any different colours. I could have used any shape pot but it's a really simple method if you want a, a quick, cheap, inexpensive, not bad looking baseless pot. Of course you don't want, have to take the base out. If you want it with a base you can leave it in. So my next pot is behind me and this is a wee bit more complicated. Um, just to make sure you can see it. So with this 
I've just done a timber framework and I've used ordinary battens. What are they? They're probably um, 30 mil square, something like that. Um, I did make it about 20 years ago. Um, and then I've lined it with this galvanized steel sheet. Now you can get galvanized steel sheet in all different thickness, but this is just one mil thick. And what I've done is I've just screwed it to the framework and I've bent it. And you can cut that sheet with tin snips or with wire cutters quite simply. Um, and because the pot has no base, um, it does mean to say that the actual structure of the pot isn't taking a load. If you imagine, if I filled this with soil in a heavy plant, that would be quite a lot of strain on the bottom and the sides of the pot. But if you take the base out, obviously all the load's been transferred to the ground, and so therefore it doesn't have to be nearly so strong. Now what I would might have done with this pot is, whereas we've got the ordinary old gal finished here, galvanised finished here, I could have just washed it with the tea wash and that would have made it look like lead. You just paint on an acid tea wash, you then wash it off, it goes black and then it goes lead colour. And I've done, I've shown you how to do that in my metal video all about metal in the garden and what you can do with it and that is a lovely finish that you can do with galvanized metal. Alternatively I could have used a metallic paint such as an old bronze, old copper or something like that and again I detail that in the what to do with metal in the garden video. I could also if I wanted to go really um, all out I could have shoved a, a boss or some sort of pattern in the middle as well um, but I think it looks quite good like that and it's a very useful fairly inexpensive pot that you can make yourself. Now for my fourth example is this beauty in the corner. Now this again I've been hunting through Peter Evans catalogues but before I did that I've just made basically a plywood box without a bottom so it's just four sides so I got two bits of plywood, well, I've got four, but two to start with. Just put them together like that. Now, obviously they're two slightly different sizes because one of them will overlap the other. So that means that it will be a much, it will mean you'll have a, if you want a completely symmetrical pot, you obviously have to have two different sizes because you cloak one end with the other. And then with a piece of batten, very nice. With a piece of batten, you then just screw it from the inside into the timber a couple of times and then that way into that one and that holds them together and then you do the same for the other two sides. Now I didn't actually do that for that. For that one I just screwed from the outside in but it's not such a good finish because you do get a slight hole where the screw goes in which I have concealed with filler and then painted over but this would be a better way to do it and again I've used I've used a fairly thick bit of ply that I found off cut in the barn so again if you make it from off cuts um, from builders merchants um, they're much much cheaper than whole sheets and then you can side on the size you want um, and you get all different grades of ply now if I was using a grade of ply that wasn't very hard wearing so maybe it wasn't far eastern ply or it wasn't a marine ply if it was just an ordinary ply then I would line the pot with black polythene on the sides only not on the base and just tack it just below the top so that the wet compost did not rot the timber um, and I tend to do that with raised beds and everything really so that forms the sides and then just to finish the top so you haven't got this very Sort of rough and ready plywood obviously plywood finish at the top i've just got this bit of architrave or i said architrave it's sort of coving i think which you get hardwood coving from builder centers um, and you can choose all sorts of different profiles from this and then we've just pinned it into the top and that just finishes it a bit now once you've done that the box looks fine and you could leave it like that or you could put an emblem in the middle, like we've used from um, Peter Evans of all sorts. But here I've actually put these straps on. Now, Peter Evans sells big sheets of these, um, of these steel bands. And again, I've just cut them out, glued them on with glue, and then I've painted them black. And obviously, when you get the two corners meeting, 
um, you would get a gap if you left it like that. So it's better just to mitre the corners. So you cut them on the diagonal, um, the top bits on the diagonal, so they just butt up nicely together. And that's a much nicer finish for it. And again, I painted it with Zinza paint, which is the paint with the sort of 12, 14 year paint interval that goes on to almost anything. It comes in a matte or a shiny. I tend to use a matte uh, because I just think it looks better. Um, but some painters prefer shiny or gloss because then it sheds dirt more easily. But it, it, it is great stuff. So there we've got one, two, three pots there. Um, all very inexpensive. Um, but I'm going to show you my very cheapest of cheap pots in another place around the corner. Come and have a look. So this is a way I use a lot and I've seen this method used at Highgrove and all sorts of really swanky gardens and I think it looks really quite good. All I've done is get a bit of old hessian and you can buy this from upholsterers, you can buy massive rolls of them um, on the internet and I've wrapped it round a very cheap basic plant pot um, and it doesn't last forever but it will look good for at least a year, often more than that. Um, now this is at the end of my raised beds, at the end of my vegetable garden. Um, so I've actually put an obelisk in it and this is the acid etch finish that I was talking about earlier. So this was just galvanised metal and then we painted it with a tea wash, washed it off, it goes black and then it goes this lead colour. And if you look at the top, you can see little obelisk. This we made for Chelsea Flower Show um, a few years ago now and we actually got the lead maker to make me real lead finials on the top, little plaques on the top to put on it. We shouldn't have bothered because actually you cannot tell the difference between the lead, the real lead and the acid etched finish. But I've got my lovely runner beans here, Moonlight, fantastic variety that survives very well in drought. It still goes on producing. Um, so in a pot, it will no doubt be drier than in the ground. So that's a good point. Um, and I just think it looks a lovely little touch to the end of my vegetable garden. Now, having done those pots, I'm actually going to make a little herbarium out in that corner. Um, we've lifted the bay tree and cut it right back dramatically. So it's got lots more light there. And I'm going to have lots of different herbs right by the kitchen door which means I can just pop out and go and pick some whenever I want. I will add a touch of colour too. See what you think.